Hello everybody. Welcome to Detox the Design Podcast. This is your host Sanjay Reddy and I am back with yet another episode where I am talking to Dhruva Rathod. Yes. I have been hearing about this guy a lot from design students and also from design aspirants. There were a number of times when I came across a lot of students talking about Dhruva sir helped me in this, Dhruva helped me in that. So I thought why not just get him on the show and talk to this person who has helped many design aspirants in clearing the design exams and even giving them some guidance on how to approach these exams so dhruva had finished his masters in design from iisc bangalore which is indian institute of science bangalore he also talks about what masters in product design and engineering at iisc offers what are the things that they teach in each semester and how the projects happen in that particular institute so stay tuned and enjoy the conversation so hi dhruva how are you doing i am doing good thank you for joining in today and uh, i'm really glad to have you on the show i've heard a lot about you from a lot of uh, design students and aspirants alike you said that dhruva sir ne help kiya hai dhruva sir did this dhruva sir did that so it's really nice to have you on the show thanks for inviting me <laughs> now uh like the general questions that come to you i'm going to ask that I'm, i know you would have answered this so many times uh to different students but i would still want to ask a few questions which might be very frequently asked so the first thing that comes up is uh you know before we get into detail what design and everything i want to know what your uh story what your uh, journey is when we are talking about design you are from a technical background who yeah. uh made the switch to uh, design course yeah. like okay. masters in uh, product design and engineering from indian institute of science bangalore which is the tata institute right yes. to cut short the story uh, so like when i i did go to a boarding school so i had vague idea of what is engineering or what is design this was like way back in 2012 uh, but some part of me was this this creative or like this problem solving and imagination and there's some some uh, some part of analytical thinking i hidden in me so uh, somehow i did not fit into the the outcome of the course after class 12 i had to choose bit, between the courses I was really interested into cars so I thought like mechanical engineering is a choice that I should be picking up and I did not have any other idea see there is design you can do bachelor's in design or something like that uh so I did join mechanical engineering assuming that I was very much interested into cars and then and eventually I'll be landing up into designing cars so then I slowly started digging up so I I thought keep designing then it started researching and I or started looking up online i felt that there are two different routes one is the technical way where you design engine where you design the car body and all that and there is the exterior or or the 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 exterior and the interior design and then the ergonomics involved and this the form shape and the concept cars you present and all that so i was like very curious and i was serious i was like okay mujhe yahi banna hai like i want to get into uh, maybe maybe i was like ki transportation design karna hai and i was kind of getting bored in my uh, engineering because it was very much into strict theoretical and less application and there are very few courses into actual uh, automobile design or car design so i used to start i used to doodle okay i used to sit in the class and uh, i used to get bored so i used to doodle out uh I think this doodling started when I was in class. Eh? So slowly it grew up, and then I used to draw this side, say lots of cars. Mm-hmm. Uh, to my, take uh, to my, if I recall, I used to draw only SUVs, maybe like Land Rover. There was like a strong impression of Land Rover on me, so I used to draw the same thing it, like daily. Okay. And then I used to doodle a lot. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so I started doing my research, and then I, I suddenly. Uh, called that there was my alumni who was who did his bachelor's in design from NFT and then I pinged him on Facebook and then he said ki okay there there are two exams that you can get into uh like uh, design 
so i i start early so slowly started uh, digging up like on like on like googling out uh, finding uh, stuff you look and then tick up blog and then i uh, kind of zeroed up on ki yahi karna hai designing karna hai because that's what my interest or my uh, skill set is with stuff very interesting and this also uh you also had to go through a process of you know uh reaching out to people and knowing a lot about design right yeah yeah so that's pretty much uh i think most of the students go through that process because there is a uh, lack of awareness about design yes yeah For i agree students, even today yeah and even to the parents to convince that okay this is a good field to be studying or to be in during this time Uh, yeah, I agree upon the awareness thing. We we actually don't know what are the options after your class twelve based on your interest. Like, suppose you're good with sketching, or suppose you're good with imagination, or suppose you you can do this. Uh, you can build up things. Suppose you, you're good with electronics, and you can build up like not breaking cars and not breaking toys, but you can build up something, some useful uh, products, something like that. So, like, we don't know what you can do with those skill set. Hmm. Yeah, that's very true, and. when you started preparing for the entrance exams which is uh, seed right you would have uh, uh, got through seed and then yeah this. portfolio interview and then you went to cpdm yes at iisc bangalore so let's talk a little bit about that process like how did you prepare for the exam and how did you prepare for portfolio and interview so i i kind of made up my mind i think my my google was only take a blog Hmm. <laughs> and yeah. a bit a bit of stuff you look where there were like other resources and the, like the whole syllabus was there but my i think my google or my boundary was take a blog like the experiences of people and then uh, maybe talking to prasanna sir like mailing him and then getting some response all that and then my vague uh, google research like google google and research so i like what i like i am basically analytical guys so whatever you tell me suppose you you ask me to crack i am like i am a cat i'll go uh, look at the whole uh, maybe the brochure read read across and see kaun sa banda chahiye inko and then what are the skill set and then go uh, read the, like check out the question papers and see what is the pattern that's coming up what are the kind of questions they are asking up and then to to match with this this level what is the level of of paper i should solve and timing so th- that the same thing i did with this uh, see thing so like uh, i i i kind of solved a couple of papers the previous papers mm-hmm. and then i felt ki this is the pattern that's going to get repeated and these are the questions that may be asked so i used to and also what what funny thing i did was the the, the two papers i solved mm-hmm. what are the answers or options were given i used to search about them and mm-hmm. understand ki Okay, so what is there? They have given maybe some art question, like art question, and some paintings, and then they give uh, like options like Picasso, Michelangelo, and other people, uh, or like there is Cubism and other other things and all. So I used to search everything and understand. Okay, okay, this is the concept, this is the fundamental, and okay, this is like Wikipedia and a couple of pages. What are what are you get of the first Google search? Like four five pages. I used to read them. Right now. I would like to ask you because uh, you mentioned analytical approach about your analytical approach. Now I'm reminded of the questions in C that there are certain questions which say that okay they're looking for analytical thinking in the evaluation criteria. So is it the same or is it the different? So my definition of analytical thinking is like uh, given a chunk of data, hmm. like you sort them up and then you kind of get insight from them. Ki this is what it is telling you meaningfully. Mm-hmm. that like in that sense and then you find a pattern among that mm-hmm. this is what is repeating this is not repeating and uh, like if you, you 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 these are the common things and these are not so common things so that that's that's my definition of analytical right cool okay now the uh, second round preparation the studio test and the uh, interview how yeah. was it like at iisc bangalore So, like, frankly speaking, preparation and science, like, my schedule was tight, like, uh, totally packed. I was doing my class, like, the final semester exams and all that. And in between, I used to do this uh, interviews. Mm. So, first, first was IIC. So, I thought, uh, like, I seriously did, like, I seriously did not prepare for IIC because 
uh, because I said uh, previously that I was actually want I actually wanted to get into this transportation or automobile design because mm-hmm. so that's what was there in my head. I like, I did very little research on CPDM before just going to the interview and uh, like who are the alumni, what are they doing, and what is the outcome of this course and all that. Just before I was going there, but I I was not really prepared. Like I was not of the goal or fixated on getting to CPDM. My goal was to get into IDC and transportation design. So uh, I prepared in that sense, and I had this very basic sketching. Like I said, uh, ki ki mera sketching was basic level tha and communication level tha. I used to do, uh, draw the silhouettes of cars, uh, like some sense of proportion and perspective to it, mm. but not the whole body and uh, the the front front three quarter view, back three quarter view, and then renders, Photoshop and all that. I was not like I was not very much aware of that. For the same reason, I actually went to IIC because I wanted to know what is this portfolio thing. Right. Even though I communicated and even though I read on Google and I kind of tried to understand among like from the Facebook groups and all that, but I did not actually understand that what should you be showing. Hmm. That too, I come from a technical like from a technical background as mechanical engineering, and I I did not uh, pursue sketching like seriously like you draw like uh, for like two point perspective, three point perspective, cubes, hmm. circles, and all that. I did not do it in a structured way. So I did not know what should I be presenting, and <laughs> all of my sketches were like on the on the back of my books. So okay. I cannot I cannot carry all of them. So I was like very con. I was like okay, let's go this place. Anyways, there people will be coming out. Let's go and do our the basic the analytical thing or the basic research thing, and we will figure it out in the in the meantime because I had enough time for the IDC or other interviews. Hmm. So I thought okay, let's go to ISC. There we will figure out. Love how you approach these things. That okay, let's just go and then figure out. Let's see what happens and then figure it out. Because like I, uh, so I'm this, this one-on-one guy. I want to talk to people and understand stuff. Mm. And then after after I talk to people, like two, two or three people or four or five people, couple of people, I get different perspectives and then I can understand. Okay, this will fit into me or not, or like what should I upscale or downscale or what do I have to showcase. Because once you go and talk to people and see their portfolios, you will understand. Okay, okay, I'm to. I mean, we have done this thing. Maybe I can include this thing, or okay, we have not done this thing. Maybe we should, uh, maybe we should, uh, like maybe I cannot cope up in this this given time, like five six days. I cannot do that kind of rendering or whatever it is. I can showcase whatever it is. I did not un- have a clear understanding of the portfolio. Me, what can I? Now I have a clear understanding of the portfolio. Whatever work you do, your sketches, your process, mm-hmm. and all that. So that back then I did not have any clue of yeah. what what you should be presenting. So my my process was very much random. So. If I, if I uh, if I was uh, taking a serious mentorship, like if I am taking right now, then it will be like structured. I have this. Uh, I start from circles, ellipses, uh, lines, yeah. and then and then products, and then maybe cars and uh, yeah. other things. And also like the uh, go out, do research and like there is a problem statement and then there is a process and all that. But back then I I had very little clue of what is this thing. So I just want yeah. to go to see their work, see and talk to people. I I made a couple of friends on Facebook and all, but you even though you share, you cannot understand what's happening. Yeah. So let's go yeah. see see their work <laughs> and then then figure it out. Very cool, very cool. Now, uh, it's it's I think I'm sure this this way of working would have helped you in your design education as well when you were doing the projects and everything. I'm sure this kind of attitude. Because there's a lot of pressure to deal with, you know, when you're in the design education, like uh, you're already there in the course. There's a lot of assignments. I'm sure you would have found this very helpful. Yeah, yeah, I found it very, very helpful. And my thing is, like, I talk to a lot of people. So, hmm. uh, like, when I joined, uh, like, some of, like, some of my classmates, they did their internship during the break. Hmm. And uh, for some reasons, I was not able to do. But I sat along with my seniors who were doing the projects. I used to go visit each of the projects and see what is the progress, what is ha- what is it happening, what should be done. Hmm. Uh, do can I help you out? So I had interaction with them. Then I understood. Okay, like like you will frame a problem statement like this. You will do this this this. Like you will follow this kind of methodology because like there are like ten or like five or six projects. Hmm. And then you will have different perspectives. Okay, this problem I have to solve. Karna. And maybe like if what if I do the same problem? How would I approach? Hmm. So I used to train myself in doing that act. So what does IAC offer? Like you made it to IAC and oh yeah, before before you go into that, what did they ask you in the interview? So like, uh, I think my interview was like very much basic. So, uh, so they asked me uh, like, where do you want to get into design and uh, how do you get to know about the uh, IA like CPD on this course and then what's the difference between designer and uh, engineer? So I I said you know, I was not 
this sketch i did not take any sketchbook i did not take any uh, cad models or like i did not take any products so they asked me like how can you prove that you 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 are like a designer aspirant or what sure. so i said ki i i bought my I, i took my laptop and then i did a couple of products in my college like the engineering products mm-hmm. and design of them and um, some sort of process that i uh, like through which i approached them i showcased uh, like a couple like two projects which i did back then we did, like edit we did a project for uh, like uh, farmers where you can extract the seeds of a uh, uh, particular uh, a particular uh, oil uh, mm. a particular oil seed where you can uh, break the shell and take the actual seed okay otherwise it's very tough you need to take hammer and beat it out so mm. we did a we did a product for that so i did the process for that i showed the process the, the approach i did uh, they asked me this funny question so you are showing the cad models where are the sketches i said ki to do a cad model you do those sketching and this is like my rough way of sketching it out so i showed them what are sketches i had mm. in apo sheets hey, this is how i approach and then they asked me that difference between engineer kya hota hai design kya hota hai like what did you figure out mm. i said ki in this engineering, engineering is kind of bound by the physics and then you go and you have this linear linear approach design is not like that you mm. can have multiple approaches like and also it depends on the problem statement that you have then they asked me like how do you happen to get into the design mm. and what did you do in your clicks so i said ki okay. i used to travel to college and all that then i used to travel when i used to travel i saw the people and then i had my own problem with the with the traveling so i told you okay. okay this was my interest very very interesting very interesting uh, interview and now let's talk about the uh, the courses at iis bangalore like what does the courses look like like for example uh, i'd like to bring up a very frequently asked question here that you know people say that if you go to iis bangalore it's completely technical okay that's what the general perception uh is among the design aspirants or students who want to go for isc so what do you talk what do you say about that to quote uh, like uh, my batch is of 25 students and then of 25 there are like four architects and then two like one computer science engineer one electronics so they could do the technical subjects so it's not it's not too technical yeah. so if you, if you if you talk in that sense it's, it's not that too technical so coming from electronics background and if you're doing the mechanical course and do, doing really good then it it says that you are very good with your fundamentals of your class 12 and you know how to apply physics hmm. if you have understanding of that if you have understanding of your basic physics then hmm. you can do it okay it's not it's it, it and it there see here we are we are not we so the course is not to make like a rock like we are not designing rockets and then it's not higher like higher level physics it's like basics you are doing regular products right and then you have you need to understand like uh, what what goes into it you need to understand the manufacturing process you need to understand uh, the basic mechanics okay. so so that so they try to make like you, you can uh, you can take the course and it's they are they are like very basic level like some of my friends they did fluid mechanics and they are from computer science they are not from mechanical background hmm. some of them they did med uh, the manufacturing design course and they, they did really, really well nice so, it's not too technical and it's not like super high hmm. you can if you if you have like you need to put some effort it's not that it's not it's, it's very easy but right. it's it's to make you understand ki these are the these are the these are all the courses or these are all the technical subjects that get into uh, to make a product okay okay so can you tell us about what happens in the first semester or the second semester like that like how does it go So, so uh, what I felt was the first semester is kind of foundational thing, and it's kind of onboarding because like you people are from different backgrounds. Like mm-hmm. they are from architecture, they are from uh, some people are from like uh, right now they are picking up design students to take fashion design. So to get everybody on board and to get everybody at the same skill, like roughly at the same skill set level, mm-hmm. because yeah, you like some people come to come come to gate also. So so to get everybody on the same level playing field, the, you have the This course is called product visualization, elements of design, and then creative engineering design, ergonomics, uh, and then there is manufacturing, like uh, materials and manufacturing design. Okay. So there are different courses which make you, uh, like, which which in which in a way make you align and make you understand the different elements when you build a product. So here we here product design is mostly of a uh, physical product design or Uh, that's very very few of like uh, product like products 
have like a little digital thing to it so okay. even though suppose this is like some of them they have designed uh, like some of my alumni they have designed uh, uh, like a washing machine and then uh, a product for mopping the floor and then apple dispenser so and like all these products have some digital interaction or digital element to it where you you can do that that too but the whole idea is to build a functional physical product okay or like at at this juncture like in 2020 or in 2021 uh, it's not just like product it's not just only product design it will have this electronics part to it it have it will have the of all the elements like, all the different uh, uh, modules or different aspects to it it's not just it's not just a chair so yeah yeah we are not stuck there it's not just a chair it's not just a cycle right now we have you, you design products that have uh, that that are smart that have electronics that have that are like way ahead and way far better than previous hmm. sources of whatever the products you build okay okay so every project that you do has to end with a physical model the working prototype of the like like most like uh, uh, i think like out of the 12 or 14 courses you will have the six or seven courses the the end goal is the end goal of the assignment is to build products at different stages it's not that every time you do this functional product hmm. but some course outcome is to to, uh, to just come with the form some course outcome is to, to make it functional you skip you skip the basic phases and then you go to the functionality phase in one course you just build the product okay so you the ideation phase the research phase everything is you do it but in a shorter time but you spend most of time in the in building the whole product okay a like, uh, couple of my friends the they have done this Uh, the e-bike thing, and then some of them have done uh, like a cradle for kid, cradle for uh, like small children, and other other products. Interesting. Just I think I have actually gone across. Uh, I think I know about the cradle project. Uh, I don't know. I heard it from some. I think I heard it from a friend of mine who uh, who was from ISC Bangalore. He oh. mentioned it to me. Yeah, yeah. I think I know about that. right so now uh so the first the final year project uh when does that start so first year pretty much you say that first semester is uh, onboarding and you know bringing the students to the same level and everything and then second uh second semester you have these uh, slightly uh, complicated subjects coming in and interesting yeah design subjects right yeah so so uh, so uh, like like in the in the first semester there are six courses and one of them is 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 getting you to understand design then mm-hmm. process so it's called cv like creative engineering design mm-hmm. uh, to, to 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 make it in simpler terms it's like stand for design thinking process and you apply to to build uh, the uh, physical physical products so and some kind of engineering <laughs> because because it's a uh, because the the idea is to to build functional products mm-hmm. it's it's not just to build mock ups and it's not just just to build uh, prototypes the whole idea of this course or this department is to build functional products okay. so the, the the aim of the thesis project also is to, is to build a functional product you cannot just show a concept on like you cannot show just a photoshop rendering or a, or a prototype like a, 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 a clay model and say hey, this is my okay. final product okay you make it uh, you should make it functional and suppose you say i'm building some smart bricks then you need to make it you need to make sure that it's it's, it's there is some cooling to it hmm. cooling element to it and then you put some item then it, it gets cold or it gets hot right so uh, would it be right to say that iisc bangalore like the cpdm yeah is more focused on making functional products uh, yeah like uh, like as per my experiences the whole idea is to make functional products hmm. uh like some of them they have become products some of them some of the outcomes of the thesis have uh like they have they are they are like making some startups based on those ideas and some are being patented some are some will become like commercialized in like soon very interesting so how does that uh thing come into play where the you know commercialization of that product or the so uh, thesis to commercialization how does that happen So, so like uh, not only really thesis to commercialization. Like, if you take the whole course structure, there are like multiple pro- courses. Where, like, there is uh, I don't remember the course name actually, 
but uh, the course starts in your uh, second semester and ends in the third semester so it's a whole year mm. uh, so you start in january and end in december and you go along with the msme uh, msme is nearby they come up with the problem statements and you build the product for them so so since you are doing with msme so eventually it will eventually become a product and they will launch and you will uh, share the the, the digital, digital uh, uh, patent and other aspects of it because you do the whole uh, you go from the so you get a brief you work on it and then you build a product and so you share this uh, ownership of it so it, it also gets into market hmm. very interesting now uh, you also mentioned that you work with msmes and they help in the manufacturing and of the product as well so this also requires a lot of travel from your end uh, for the product to make that product right yeah so uh, uh, once once you get on board a problem statement you need to travel with it. so like one of my juniors uh, he did the project uh, for like, i don't remember the name of the fruit but it grows in lay so okay. he had to travel a couple of times to lay and then to wow. figure out okay, how is how is it how is it grown or how do you harvest it what kind of uh, products are there Uh, that's very interesting man that's very interesting and uh, very exciting to actually you know travel and uh, know about things know about the place uh, going to that place so this is very good this is uh, very good and interesting and i think a lot of students who are listening to this podcast would definitely uh, feel very inspired to take up that co take up uh, you know uh, this way of approach to design as well and now i would like to talk about the startup culture that is there in iisc bangalore i know a few few companies a few products that were launched from within the uh iisc bangalore campus so can you please tell us a, a little about that see the, so the, the like my understanding of the course is the course basically builds product like product leaders or uh, design leaders so it's uh, if you if you are uh, very much interested in to like uh, like making your own startup because you work on a you work on a product you work on a problem statement for a year and you kind of understand ki what is the market, like market it has and if you are seriously interested you can incubate it there's a this incubation cell and then you can get funding you can do like some more work on it and then get like get, launch it so like a uh, couple of startups that i know is Like, uh, like now they might not be a startup because they, they already become companies one is lexical innovations they build the farm uh, farm related products and okay. the one one is by apu shankar uh, he's building a smart ring hmm. and then a couple of building a couple of senior a couple of alumni are they are building some like they are working on uh, biomedical products and like lot many of my juniors are currently in the incubation cell they are they are working on their uh, uh, thesis pro- thesis products and hmm. their uh, Uh, one of the course uh, uh, like related projects that's a interesting and a very good platform to uh, start with you know from uh, where you have these facilities to go for you know go go and uh, work there and even consider your project or your product very seriously so i think this is a very good uh, the very good facility to have for the students and now while uh, the students were interested in launching their product or manufacturing their product into the market are busy at the incubation cell or, what, or, or wherever they are doing it what do the other students who want to take up a job right how do they get it so uh, there is a active placement cell in isc and there uh, there's a placement team or the people come up uh, Uh, volunteering and they put effort to to be in the placement uh, mm-hmm. of the department. So it, like uh, they volunteer. So so what happens is like you get a break, you get a summer break after your second semester. It's a three month break. Mm-hmm. So people mostly like whoever is interested into uh, getting a job, most people uh, do interns. And then because it's a three month break, you can do whatever. Suppose you're interested in getting a job at the end of the course, you will do go do it. Suppose you're interested into getting into research or you're kind of inclined towards research, then you go work with the faculty in those three months. Some like one of the faculty in the department, and then you you kind of understand whether you are fit to into it or you're after that. Mm-hmm. So so you have you have those you have that time, so you can uh, work work it out. 
so so since you work it out at that point of time and you have enough connections uh, if you you already work some people will get pre placement offers uh, and some people uh, because they have made enough connections and also the alumni are like really helpful so during the place, placement if you are interested and if you want to get it you will get it mm-hmm. uh, unless you have some other plans right i understand and now uh, everybody who is graduating from a batch yeah uh, they would be product designers right product designers graduating yes. so yes. what are the roles are do they end up becoming uh, product designers in the industry or can they assume roles uh, different roles uh, i would ideally like uh, like in reality i actually want people to assume a bigger role because the the whole course makes you understand different processes and different uh, so suppose you take the whole product design process uh, each of the course adds some element of of it and you understand the whole process like from from problem finding to problem solving and to making the pro- prototype prototype testing it out and then you getting feedback and then read like reading the whole process and then launching the product and then the after effects also so yeah. like what i personally felt and what i actually understood after doing the course it it is better and it is good if uh if the industry is ready to take these people and mm. uh, give them the lead roles or to lead a team of designers ki it to mix and match it's like a product manager product manager mm. and design manager and this thing so you cannot ideally define because it depends on the company and right. uh, the, the the job description there but it's kind of makes a product manager and uh, a design a design manager right. because we have courses from uh, product uh, management we have couple of management courses we are taught different methodologies and process so so i feel that this is a mix and match of a product manager and a design manager that is uh, that is that is what will actually fit into like once you do this course i think you are better fit to that thing than starting at a basic designer and then climbing a ladder and then and getting into this yes yes so let's talk about the campus in itself because i've heard a lot about isc campus and i've uh, i've had the chance to be there for a week also and i've totally totally loved it so i'm sure it grows on you and you would definitely want to go back if you were allowed to uh, like, yeah i like i like i've seen there's like couple of my alumni and my classmates they like they left the campus they got a job and then they felt that they they won't fit into the that kind of environment and they kind of applied for phd and then they got into phd and they did phd <laughs> or some people they have done like uh, they have like four four years experience in the industry but they feel that they should uh, start working on their own product and so they come back to the faculty and then they start uh, working on the idea that of the they see the 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 projects that the faculty are involved so they want to work on that i think they fundamentally they really like the camp love the campus <laughs> because it's, it's 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 really good like you are a good good environment good space yeah and you get lot many to, tools and pro, to to work on and, yeah yeah so it's trees everywhere cycles everywhere you can just take a say take a cycle and go anywhere you want to which is really cool yeah nice nice so now another question that lot of students ask is uh, i know we had talked about this indirectly but let me just drop that very cliche question how is iisc bangalore different from ibc hey see the to to tell to tell is because because i have uh, interacted with many of my friends from idc nid and uh, like other design schools to 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 say in a way i i don't think there's a difference but but every school has a US, different usp yeah IIC has its USP into better building functional products, and it's it's situated in IIC. Like situation, it's situated in IIC. Sibidam mm-hmm. Sibidam is in IIC. So you have a uh, you have a way to cross collaborate, and then there are parallel projects that are going on, mm-hmm. and then you can go take up courses in other departments. You have you can interact with the other fa- the, uh, department from other faculty and know what is going on. Mm-hmm. So to 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 say in a way. uh the whole aim is to build functional products right but but i i saw that like uh like in idc also they do functional products but uh they don't do in a way that we do hmm. of course i mean there 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 process is kind of different 
yeah our approach and process kind of thing. and like when we see the song that is a functional design people assume that it's much too technical but it's not that way so the the, the whole idea is you cannot just show concepts hmm. the ideal outcome of the thesis or right, the ideal outcome of, of some of the courses is not to just uh, say that you are kind of imaginative and you can concepts conceptualize ideas it's not that to to say that it's to say that you can build products yeah from just uh, a thought or idea you can come with this whole product and it's working right suppose you say suppose you say car you want to design some electric car you can yeah. not just show renders on the wall and say ki this is how it will be and this is the features and all that uh-huh. you need to build it from right. scratch and show to people that this is how it will work and you need yeah. to take a take people for a ride take you get them they should sit sit in side and then they you need to drive it for some time and show it mm. so it will work right cool now what would be your suggestions to students who are uh, preparing for design and tech exams let's say seed uh, nid or nift uh, all these exams and for people who are coming to design switching to design from a non design background what would your suggestions be i think the background thing doesn't matter the only thing <laughs> the background actually kind of influences you so i because since i am mechanical engineering my thought process because i am an engineer my whole thought process is basically linear thinking mm-hmm. even though i could, i i like i kind of break it out it took me some effort to unlearn things and relearn the whole process to be open mind to, to be open minded and then to be not be in that box like out of the box thinking or lateral thinking and then uh, not this not just like single approach to solve a problem so right. To, to come out of that mold, it will take time. So suppose you 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 clear that you want to get into design, then you need to start practicing this kind of thinking so that it's free and like you make your mind comfortable. And once you get on board and you get along with other 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 like others of your classmates, like maybe architects or maybe bachelor of design or maybe fashion like people who have done their fashion design courses or in fashion tech like bachelor in fashion, then you will be along with them, and you will be this this guy bubbling out with ideas. Hmm. there is no obstruction to it you <laughs> your learning or your understanding of physics is not uh, making you constrained to think right so that's what you should be practicing that's cool and any any particular things for design aspirants in general like what uh, usually they are very confused what to start what to you know what to study or uh, what to practice and what to what not what not to look at see the problem the problem is like because the internet is filled out with content you don't know what to pick up mm, yeah this is kind of very vague but what i said was <laughs> a guy like one of one of the student he he asked me he oh, how should i prepare i said he okay what you do is go take last year's papers he was preparing for an uh, i think c i said he go and pick c papers last year's papers now analyze it so down and see what is the topic the part a part b so he mm. take i this was this more much focused into part b wherein uh, he sat down and he figured out okay, okay these are the kind of questions that are coming after that what he kind of understood is like i should go out and talk to people <laughs> he cannot just sit down in his town maybe uh, uh, suppose uh, this i think this guy was from warangal so he cannot just sit down in the, in the town and then in his house and then he cannot solve problems mm-hmm. in order to solve problems you need to go out Right. Go out in the sense you need to go. Suppose I'm um, like I'm currently residing in Hyderabad, so I I go to to grocery place. I go to mar- like a uh, vegetable market, and I go to like I I don't buy uh, fish. So like, suppose you go suppose you you eat fish, you go to fish market, you go to this uh, uh, bus stop, you go to railway station, you go to metro mm-hmm. station, and see. So once I was traveling, I saw this woman in like this was in De- Hyderabad metro that that woman was scrubbing the floor. Hmm. Either what are you doing? She she was like literally leaning down and then like if you see if you see you feel that she's undergoing so much pain. Like right. it's not very much ergonomic to to bend in that in that way and hmm. scrub the floor because like there are like uh, the pigeons are dropping and then you do because hmm. it dried out and then you do it. So I I like one of the guy was asking what should I do what should I do like product design he was preparing for product design I gave him this photo and then asked him to observe what is the problem there now. I I gave him this whole context. Ki, this mm. is what is happening now. Now solve now 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 approach. How do you solve it? Mm. So then, like uh, one of the guys said that I was solving the seed problem. Like I was, I did not uh, do the seed thing. Seed some he was stuck with some question, and he said I did not do. Then I said now you so now you go to the actual context. It was hospital environment. You, you now you go to context. You will understand what are the what are the parameters or what are the constraints. How is the hospital set up? What is the layout? Like how are the staircase set up? Like what is the inclination angle? 
and then what it would like suppose you are designing a product what should be its fit hmm. unless you go to actual environment you will you will, you will never have this understanding ki how how should you build the, build the product you should basically be observing things hmm. and then ask the question why why is it happening okay the word observation connects a lot of things uh, like you just mentioned contexts products processes and also Pro- visual things problems problems problems, problems yeah <laughs> lot of things so this word observation observational skills are very very important and thank you for bringing this up because this is something that uh, even if somebody asks me i do tell them about this but then sometimes the students are not willing to go and put themselves in that particular context like you just mentioned like i'll tell you why because what happens is because we most people like uh, most people come from cities or towns mm-hmm. and you get into a design school once the moment you get into design school you are bubbling with this idea ki you want to solve to the same age group like this 20 to 25 or 20 to 30 age groups you want to build uh, smart products and all that but once you go into design school you understand you also think you also see that there are a lot many problems that you need to be solving as a design right. student or the the faculty the, the, the kind of research they are doing with the problem problems they are solving they go they, they do this under privileged kids they do this for the uh, like old like elderly people hmm. suppose you are not very much passionate about problem solving and you are not able to uh, you are not actually empathizing with the uh, different kind of age groups you kind of feel okay why should i be solving i am this like young and energetic guy i should be solving to this kind of age group right but like to say you are a designer and you need to solve any kind of problem <laughs> whether you like it or not or whether you are kind of close to it or not yeah it's it's kind of untold agreement or untold uh, resolution that you are taking that you will be solving any kind of uh, problems so i'm like i'm a physical product design guy but i think i can solve a graphic design problem or like some something that's related to graphic design or visual communication from my understanding of the the process and methodologies i cannot say that i'll only solve my physical design for like problem i will not solve maybe automobile related or maybe something else you are a designer you need to solve any any problem and you might not have the complete knowledge of the that particular problem then you need to approach the respective stakeholders and then have understanding you you kind of have this basic tools or process to solve any kind of problem so unless you become uncomfortable during this phase during preparation phase hmm. once you get on board you're in hostel you're getting this cozy environment you're staying in campus you actually don't want to become uncomfortable like lot many lot many of people they become so comfortable in the campus they might not approach they might not go out and they might not know hmm. so it's better to to make you uncomfortable like one of my friend is there he, he kind of travels in trains only he doesn't want to travel in, in flights because yeah. he he said he does that i don't get to hear stories i don't get to observe people yeah. he's, he's he's kind of photographer too so he kind of travels and takes so so that that's where you meet i actually tried that so i i i i traveled the whole train journey i kind of captured photos i yeah. took that guy the the, th- the thela wala or the the guy who selling this oh. uh, uh, the chips thing and then the the guy the different kind of sellers you have they are doing some jugad around their problems but nobody solving their problems so suppose suppose i give you this problem statement how will you solve so i used to give kind these kind of problems somebody asked me like, yeah i am not able to find problems i used to i used to care, capture them and then keep in my repository and i used to uh, like deliver it to like all the people who are saying like i'm product designer then i will say okay, okay this is why it is this this way you you kind of approach this way mm. because you you your understanding of the context is kind of different and this yeah. kind of and understanding of the context is kind of different so then there will be like uh, some collaboration some understanding of okay, okay this is idea one this is idea two and then maybe i can club both of the ideas right so my request to whoever is listening to this podcast so this episode guys you need to really really keep these things in mind these are like the main points main things that dhruva just mentioned observational skills like it covers a lot of things that you just talked about context like uh, and also age groups that you talked about is again very important so guys do make a note of these things that you really need to uh, think about all of these things when you are preparing for the design and design exams and this will definitely help uh even i went through this process and uh like i did not have anybody to just uh break it down to me this much so thank you dhruva for doing it for all the design aspirants out there yeah no problem it's for pleasure <laughs>
and uh, thank you again for also joining with me on the podcast i am really glad that you were able to do this and thank you for sharing your journey how you became a designer and also thank you for sharing this valuable information about iisc bangalore i'm sure this will clear a lot of doubts for the students and uh, thanks for getting me asking for and thanks for the listeners too <laughs> thank you